Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to head over to America once again. And this is a brewery that I introduced you to just a couple of months back, but I was quite impressed with them. And as I always say with a brewery, when you try something from a, from a new place, you want to have something from the dark end of the spectrum and something from the lighter end of the spectrum to give you a real feel for what a brewery is all about. So for this one, we are going to return to the District of Columbia and we're having a taste of yet another beer from DC Brown. This is my second review from these guys, and this one is the Pen Quarter Porter, which comes in at 5.5% ABV, and they're describing this one as a limited-released, robust porter. So I think it should be really nice. When I checked this one out on Rate Beer earlier on, I think it had like a 92 and a 95 within the style, and I think it was like 3.85 or 3.9, something like that, that this guy had on Untapped. So it should be a really, really nice beer, and I'm looking forward to it, and as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer. This is of course one of the breweries that has appeared over here in Sweden quite recently. The last beer I reviewed from these guys was uh, the Turbo Boost Multi Ball. It was a New England IPA, and I remember being really quite impressed with that one so hopefully this is another one that follows in the same light but yeah very much looking forward to this and as I said I hope you guys enjoy my take on this beer so anyway as is usual with my reviews then I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other reviews that I've done from DC Brow hopefully I can review some more in the near future their beers are appearing fairly regularly over here so I would assume there will be more this of course is one of the ones that reached us on the 15th of February 2019 through Say Stembo Laggett's Small Partiers. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the American beers that I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about DC Brow then. So as I mentioned earlier, DC Brow are based in Washington, District of Columbia and they were founded back in 2009 by Brandon Scal and Jeff Hancock. Scal, of course, quite an apt name for a brewery that is... Um, or for a brewer that is exporting their beer over into Sweden, almost like school as we say over here. But Brandon manages the business side of the brewery, while Jeff is the brewmaster. And he brewed previously for Grizzly Peak Brewing and also Arbor Brewing, both of which are in Michigan, and then Flying Dog Brewing, who started out in Colorado and are now based in Maryland, if memory serves me correctly. But DC Brewer are apparently the first brewery to operate within the District of Columbia limits since the close closure of the Heurich Brewery back in 1956. But in 2011, they tapped their first keg of beer which was called The Public and that has become a little bit of a kind of cult classic for them but over the last few years they've to continued to grow their capacity and they also successfully lobbied the city council to pass a bill that allowed beer tastings on the premises where they were brewed and so now they have a tasting room on site so in terms of the District of Columbia they're widely regarded as being one of the, um, you know, quite one of the, the pioneering breweries. I think there's about three, four or five uh, different breweries in the District of Columbia now. It's a very, very small area, of course, borders Maryland and Virginia, if I'm remembering correctly. I have been to D.C. Uh, two or three times if I remember correctly and I remember it being very very kind of hot and humid so they do they did need a couple of breweries over there I have to say but um, yeah uh, that's all you really need to know about the brewery just now as I mentioned I tried one of their IPAs a little while ago which was the first beer that reached us over here in Sweden and my first ever beer from the District of Columbia and that was very very nice so I'm really curious to see how these guys do with the uh, the darker side of the spectrum so um, yeah that's all you need to know about the brewery just now if you want to learn a little bit more check out the brewery website in the description below and of course you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that and that will keep you up to date with all the latest goings on there so yeah let's get on to the actual tasting of this beer itself one of the cool things I've always found about the DC Brow beers it actually tells you a little bit behind the um, you know the names of these beers as well and of course with this being from DC it's um, 
a lot of their names are related to kind of American history, you know, the presidents like Link, uh, Lincoln and Jefferson and uh, all these kind of things, you know. So um, on the back here, it tells you a little bit about Penn Quarter. So Penn Quarter is f is most famous for Ford's Theatre, where President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated in his coat and hat can still be seen to this day. So yeah, I remember watching that, the Lincoln film with uh, Daniel Day-Lewis in it, and, you know, very, very good film right enough and apparently very accurately um, portrays what, uh, what uh, Lincoln was supposed to be like. So yeah, it's quite cool actually that uh, a brewery that's in the the you know the seat of power in America, if you like, is using historical names for their beers. There's a brewery back in Scotland does that. The Broughton Brewery names uh, their beers after famous Scots, the Black Douglas and things like that. I always thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, nicely presented beer. This one there, you can see um, Abraham Lincoln's hat. You can also see the U.S. Um, the the DC brow symbol, of course, is um, a little bit like the the U.S. Capitol, the Capitol building where you got all the, the politicians and things like that on the, the mile in uh, DC. One of the things I always, I always liked that area where you've got the Smithsonian and things like that in DC and you can see on the Washington Monument it's about the same colour of stone till about a third of the way, two thirds of the way up and then they ran out of money and had to change the colour of stone uh, on it too. I always remember that about DC but I enjoyed my time there and it's cool to try yet another craft beer from that city. You can see on the back here, here is the, the made in DC symbol which is actually pretty cool. As I said the, D, the District of Columbia is just a very very kind of small a square of land if you like. So um, yeah, interesting one. This 5.5% robust porter. So without further ado, I guess, let's get this guy out and we'll get on to the tasting. And one thing, they have got the um, they have got the the kroner pan on this one. This one of course I think is for Sweden and Denmark and this is the one for Norway. You get the two kroners back. Um, so yeah, let's get this guy out and we will get on with the tasting. I'm very curious to see how this one turns out. When you open up, you get some really nice chocolatey quality out of this beer. But yeah, look at that. That's one of the darkest and most oily looking porters I think I've seen in quite a while. Actually. I don't review all that many porters at the moment actually. It's mainly Imperial Stouts and stuff like this, but I can tell you straight away, just on the basis of the aroma, the aroma of this um, porter, just as I've brought it out of the can, is somewhat akin to uh, a sort of imperial stout beer, but that looks really nice actually. I have to say, that's one of the darkest porters I've actually seen, you know, usually quite a few of them, they're, they're quite, they do have some degree of transparency to them, but that is certainly one of the darkest porters I've ever come across as far as I can recall actually, you know, that's pretty impressive I have to say, so definitely a nice dark sort of ebony um, very very dark rose nut color, uh, rosewood color. This one, I'm sorry, um, but yeah, a little bit, a bit over a half finger of a frothy. I would say beige, very dark beige kind of tan head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, and a few little ones just heading up towards the uh, the bottom of that head there. But you know, overall, it does look pretty nice and not overly surprising in terms of its appearance for a porter. But just it definitely has to be one of the darkest and most oily ones I've seen on the pour. That was pretty impressive when I opened that up and for a beer that's only 5.5% you know it does seem to leave a good little bit of lacing on the glass which is quite uh, it's quite impressive there actually you can see the oil so the oily side of the beer just taking a little bit of time to settle there but yeah let's take a closer look at the aroma and just see how we get on with this one mmm now that's interesting yeah so some lovely big kind of um, cocoa notes to this one, you know, you've got a, a lovely blend of chocolate in there. You've got some of the higher, you know, 70, if not, a bit more than that, about 80, 90% kind of cocoa chocolatey notes out of this one. You do have an element of a milkier chocolate to this beer as well, which is uh, which is really, really nice. There is a little touch of a roasted black malt underpin in this one, but I'm finding that this porter really is leaning towards the sweeter side of things, which is quite interesting. There's definitely a little touch of a kind of well-fired brown sugar in there. It's not simply a chocolate sweetness that's in this one. There is definitely a little bit of a, you know, a, a brown sugary sweetness. I'd say it's a sort of, um, it does have an element of caramelly sweetness to it, but at the same time, quite toasted. Um, and I do like that about this beer. There's a little bit of an almost nutty quality to this one as well, I would say. Almost a little bit like um, nougat or, uh, or something like that. I think there is a little bit of uh, of that coming out of this beer. It almost has a little bit of a nougaty um, 
caramelly brown sugar quality. Definitely a little bit of a kind of um, brown bready note to this one as well. Um, and, in, and honestly, when I sugar the beer up a little bit, when I shake it up a little bit, you start to get a sort of slightly more earthy, kind of herbal -y quality to this beer as well. But definitely a sort of brown bready note, a little bit of a uh, nutty, woody, very slightly woody kind of thing coming out of it. But when you sugar it up, you start to get a bit of an earthiness and a bit of a herbal quality to this one too. So just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer, because this is definitely one of the more kind of complex porters that I've come across in the last little while as well. I think this one's going to be a bit of a cracker, to be honest, so very curious. But yeah, on the hoppy side of things, a bit of earthiness in there. You can pick up a little bit of a, a light grassy note to this one, but not too much. And there is a little touch of a kind of red floral quality to this beer. Um, no, sorry, not red floral, red fruity quality. A bit of a brain fart there. A little bit of a slightly red fruity quality to this one as well. It's it's more of a kind of figgy. It has a little touch of a figgy note, but it's got a little bit of a darker, almost oily, raisiny or plummy type quality to it as well. So as I always say, just take a little bit of time and enjoy the aroma of this beer before you get stuck in it. But that's always half the experience when it comes to beer, whiskey and sake and stuff like that. You always want to just have a good little smell of it and see how you get on. But let's have a taste of this one then. So this one is the Pen, uh, the pen Quarter, a robust porter, limited release one from DC Brow in the District of Columbia over in America. Let's get stuck in. Slanging, skull. Oh, now I'll tell you something, that's a lot lighter in the mouthfeel than I was thinking it was going to be. You saw how oily this guy was in the pour, but really in the in the mouthfeel it's, it's actually got a nice little bit of lightness and crispness to it, which is the thing, you know, the difference between the porter and the stout mainly, it's all about the yeast they use right enough, but the porter is, um, the, the, the mouthfeel is far, far lighter than a stout and it's a, it's a more crisp and lighter beer. This one actually is, um, it's definitely, you know, it, it has almost the same, and even compare this, comparing this to the sort of traditional English porters, this one is very light in its mouth beer. It's almost akin to the likes of the German Schwarz beer or the, um, the, the Czech Mavi in terms of its mouth beer. It really does have that kind of level of lightness and crispness to it, but in terms of flavour, you know, certainly isn't lacking. It certainly has the profile that you'd expect of one of these kind of um, English porters, if you like, although that, albeit, it has a little bit more of that kind of um, American punchiness rather than the more kind of English conservative type of flavour. But yeah, I like I like what this one's going. The, the main, the first impression that I have of this one though, Big in flavour, but just a bit lighter in the, the mouthfeel compared to some of the other ones. But yeah, it does have a good little bit of bite to it. When you take this in, you have got a nice kind of uh, bite to the beer, but you've also got a good little bit of... Uh, it really smooths out after the, it, it, it comes in, it's got a bit of a bite to it, it smooths out a little bit and then you start to get some more of these kind of um, sort of more roasty, toasty, bitter qualities to this one coming out at the um, at the end of the, in the aftertaste of the beer I would say. So um, yeah, I like what they've done with this one, it, it, it's interesting, it just takes a few sips to get around it as it always does with these kind of darker beers. Um, just take a few sips and let your whole mouth adjust to it before you start analysing it too much. But yeah, this one to me, um, it's got a nice sort of, um, it, the black malts in this one, you can really feel that just blanket in the middle of your palate. Um, it's got a little touch of a kind of almost espresso type smoothness to it. Um, if there is a coffee element to this beer, I do wonder if they could have used a little bit of carafa malt in this one. I think it's got black malt and a little bit of carafa just from um, the way it's coming out. I would suspect that they've used a little bit of German malt in here. Um, although that beer, you do get a lot of different American malts too. There's just something about it, about this in my head that's telling me they've maybe used a little bit of Weirman, um carafa malt from Germany. I'd be very surprised if they, they hadn't either that or they're using an American kind of equivalent of that um, of that one because it just has that almost, that, that smoothness if you like. It does have a little bit of that German smoothness in the middle of it which is, is, is very, very nice. 
but yeah you can feel that roasty black malt just forming the backbone of the beer on top of that you just have a little bit of a slightly um, espresso-y type smoothness um, and as I've always said when I've reviewed coffee stouts and things like that I'm not the hu the biggest uh, I, I you know I never drink coffee but I really appreciate the level of complexity that coffee beans um, being added into the beer can give you there is almost just a little touch of an espresso note to this one which gives it a lovely kind of smoothness um, the the malt I was expecting a little bit of brown sugar and a little bit of chocolate um, in this one too which is uh, which is really, which would be really nice but this one it doesn't it doesn't have the sweetness that you pick up in the aroma this one definitely tastes a little bit different from how you would expect if you think about the aroma but yeah I'll say that it is um, a nice beer when they say it's a robust porter it as I, you know as I was mentioning earlier does have a nice little bit of a, a kind of bite to it so center your palate with this one there is a little touch of chocolate in there and there's maybe the, but there's not really brown sugar you the middle of the palate is drying out quite a bit in this one and it's a roasty earthy um, you know a roasty earthy um, bitterness that's coming out of this one but it does have a degree of smoothness to it and that's nice there is almost a little a slight touch of a brown bready note to this one the further into the aftertaste you go but really it's all about the the, the um, espresso smoothness and the roasty black malts and the there's only a little hint of a kind of chocolatey note in the back corners of the palate you've got quite a strong earthiness to this one that's American hops in there I don't think there's much um, doubt about that and the further it's quite a dark earthiness in the back corners of your palate and then as you come further forward along the side of your palate the earthiness smooths out a little bit it does remain there until quite far forward on the sides of your tongue but then you get a little touch of a floral um, quality and then round the very front curve of the palate you've got a nice little bit of a, a lighter grassy element to the beer but you can still detect a little touch of those earthy qualities coming out this is one of these beers it smells as if it's going to be very very complex but it's actually quite um, simple in terms of its flavour profile. And um, the further you go into the aftertaste as well, I'm starting to notice there is a little touch of a woody element to this one kind of coming out too. Um, but behind the front curve of the palate then with this beer, yeah, in terms of the fruity side of the beer, as I always say, you get that little oily bubble that comes out behind the very front curve of your palate and to me again it's just got a little touch of um, that sort of figgy um, figgy red candied fruit sort of flavour to it, it def definitely a little touch of that kind of juicy figgy quality to the beer and then the further you go into the aftertaste it becomes a little bit more like a sort of candied strawberry, it reminds me of the little heart shaped sweets you get in uh, Haribo Star Mix, it really has an element to that too and if you try like really high cocoa chocolate as well it has that element of um, it has an element of the sort of red fruity esters that you get out of that I will say as well that the further you go into the aftertaste, if you go towards the back corners of your palate and then just come in a little bit there's a nice very dark um, high cocoa, you know I think it must be like a 90% cocoa chocolate, the chocolatey flavours in this one really do start to come out more in the aftertaste and it's kind of the feel that this beer has, the palate dries out a little bit and it's the roasty, the, the roasty notes that push away out some of the coffee smoothness and also a nice darker um, chocolatey note in there as well um, but yeah I like how this one, um, how all the flavours in this kind of go together and um, it really is quite um, it really is quite nice how all these different flavours go together um, so yeah this one gets a big thumbs up from me I can see why this one's quite highly rated if you like your porters to be quite nice and have a bit of bite about them then this is one that you're going to uh, that you are going to really enjoy but it's called a robust porter so you know that's exactly what you get from that particular style I will say that you know the robust porter I think I've seen maybe one from Brewdog or something like that back home in Scotland but I've never really seen any from other European brews, particularly not here in Sweden. We do get porters here, but I don't think I've ever seen one labelled as a robust porter. I think that's more of a kind of American, uh, and a little bit of an Americanism when it comes to the craft beer world. But nonetheless, it's a very nice beer, this one. If you like your porters to be a bit more dark and punchy, you're going to have a good time with this one. In terms of the mouthfeel then, as I said, for me, compared to other porters, this one is quite light. You can feel that the water in this one almost tastes, it reminds me a little bit actually some of the beers you'll get from the north of Sweden or from Iceland or even from home in Scotland as well. It's got, the water in this one almost has a little bit of a minerally quality to it. It feels, this beer just feels very, very clean, if that makes sense. Um, so it's, it's quite a wet mouthfeel to this one. 
Um, I would say it's, yeah, it's, it's, if I had to place this body, it's at the bottom end of mid-bodied. The carbonation is quite smooth to this one. You've got a nice malty bitterness to this one. But you do have some sweetness that pushes its way out later on and a bit of smoothness in the middle. But it goes bitter, smooth, bitter. That's the best way to, to kind of describe the malt base in this one. Nice bit of IBU from the hops as well. I think in total, I would guess the IBUs of this beer are somewhere around 60 or 70, something like that. Yeah, the beer, and it will adjust, your mouth will adjust to this one, but I think the IBUs of this beer is probably around the 60 mark, I think, yeah, somewhere around the 60 IBU mark for this beer. Um, but yeah, nice, as I say, the malt base smooth has a good bit of bitterness, smoothness, and then more bitterness, and you've got a nice little touch of a juicy um, red fruit in there, but the red fruit, I would say, is quite minimal. This beer is about the more roasty, bitter qualities, but it pulls it off very, very well. In terms of porters, it's not the most complex one that I've come across, but it's, it's and I think it's fair to say this one's very straight up, but in within that, it's just very nicely done, and you can't really ask for much more than that. You do get some beers that are complex and you get some that are just kind of straight up and this is one of the ones that's straight up but does a really nice job. So yeah, I think that's a good place to kind of leave this one. The Pain Quarter, a robust porter from DC Brow over in uh, in Washington DC in America. Very interesting beer this one and for me now this brewery have proved to me that they can do the dark side of things very well and they can also do the lighter side of things quite nicely. So um, yeah, I need to try a few more different styles from these guys and I hope that at some point we get some more different breweries from DC over here in Europe. But yeah, really interesting beer and I'm glad that I was able to review this one for you. So let's leave it at that. Once again, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from DC Brow and uh, make sure you check out my social media as well and try some of these beers. Thank you again for watching and I will catch you guys very soon. This is the Pen Quarter Robust Porter at 5.5%, one of the small parties on the 15th of February 2019 through Sea Stem Belaget here in Sweden from DC Brow over in Washington DC in America. Until the next time, slander just now and I'll catch you guys very soon. Have a go at this beer if you like a nice kind of bitey porter if you like. Slander, skull.